good day, good day, good afternoon, evening, whatever day it is for you. Welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lori Larson. Uh, today is episode 226. Ah, yeah, I hope you guys had a great weekend. Ours was really busy. We had uh, a celebration of life for my uncle. We had our uh, grandson over for a little bit. Oh, on the Friday night, we had a barbecue uh, at a neighbor's. And there was a lot of people there that we knew. So that was really fun. And then uh, yesterday, Father's Day, ended up being uh, a very spontaneous, planned at like 1 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, fire, wiener roast, uh, Father's Day slash birthday supper for my dad. Well, Father's Day for my son, Craig, and Father's Day for my hubby, and um, and then for my dad, and yeah, happy birthday. It was his 75th birthday yesterday. Yeah. So anyways, what did I want to talk about today? You know, I use this show to my advantage. I found this article a week or two ago, and it's been sitting on my computer, and I wanted to look a little bit more into it. Someone I knew had shared it on Facebook, and it's called The Holy Simplicity of Sitting with Our Pain. So I'm just going gonna, gonna to read it to you. Or I'm going to read it to me. <laughs> Sitting with our pain is such a simple act, yet it can be one of the hardest things to do. Feeling our pain, not rushing in to fix it, numb it, avoid it, or cover it up takes enormous courage. This is where surrender comes in. We reach a point in our healing where we've read all the books, consulted all the gurus, or tried all the fancy techniques, and all that's left is the last thing we want to do, is feel our painful feelings. Ironically, sitting with our pain is precisely what will eventually bring us all the things we were looking for through avoiding it. A major key to healing emotional wounding is the willingness to endure discomfort for the sake of transformation. Oh, that messed with my head when I read that. So a major key of healing emotional wounding is the willingness to endure discomfort for the sake of transformation. Okay. The willingness is essential to truly come out of the other side of childhood wounds. Discomfort can come in many forms. Being misunderstood by family members. Sitting with your own pain and just feeling it and allowing it to be there going through a period of anger or grief without knowing when the uncomfortable feelings will end, having low energy or a feeling of being lost and unsure, allowing yourself to be vulnerable and receive support from others, distance from people who you used to be close to. Our cult culture promotes the idea of immediate gratification and instant results, it takes enormous courage and strength to stick with the unglamorous process of healing that time that has a timeline of its own. In addition to the cultural component, there's also the survival instincts within us that tell us to take flight, to fight or take flight when we feel threatened. That is why having support in the healing process is essential. To an unhealed inner child, the only way it knows how to soothe itself is to act in accordance with the patterns that were imprinted by the family of origin. But usually, those are precisely the patterns that are causing the pain. This keeps us trapped in a loop. The answer is to cultivate the skill of mothering and soothing our inner child while we make new choices that better reflect our true desires and needs. This inner bond is what helps us to effectively separate from family and cultural patterns, patterns that cause suffering. For many of us growing up, involved a series of self-betrayals in which we had no choice but to create an inner split in order to survive. The split usually involves some form of numbing our feelings and rejecting ourselves in order to be accepted by our families, 
Healing involves the recovery of our ability to feel, fully feel our feelings and thus to feel and express the truth of who we are without shame. While we are surrounded with messages to avoid our pain, both externally in the culture and internally through coping me mechanisms, isn't that interesting? It is through being present with our own pain and allowing our feelings to flow that really happen. The, oh, that healing really happens. Truth is found outside of our comfort zone. Outside the comfort zone is the space in which we separate from dysfunctional patterns that have been in, ingrained in us by our culture and families. There are two main phases of learning to endure discomfort for the sake of transformation. Each phase may overlap at times, but generally we move from resistance to surrender. So resistance. Here we usually have a great deal of aversion and avoidance of looking at the painful feelings we experience. We may seek various ways to numb out or repress the truth of what we're feeling. Resistance can take the form of self-sabotage, forgetfulness, overwhelm, and addictions. Sometimes resistance can be helpful as an inner boundary of slowing things down until we're ready to fully see something. And sometimes it can be an avoidance of what we know we must face. It takes self careful self-examination. And this is where I would also add in that having the ability to ask questions and know what's light and heavy for you. It takes careful self-examination to see what form of resistance is operating. We may experience some resistance at each new level of healing, but as we grow, we can better recognize resistance and more easily move through it. So surrender. Most of us surrender simply because the pain of resistance becomes too great. We eventually cross a threshold where we've learned to trust that embracing the pain rather than running from it is what actually provides relief. We fully taste the joy and freedom that comes from being in contact with the real, with, yeah, the real within oneself. There is nothing like having to move through the pain into the joy of feeling one with yourself. The peace of inner alignment, feeling and expressing your authentic feelings without the need to defend them. There dawns a harmony between your personal imperfections and your erasable part in the greater perfection of life. Eventually, the longing and hunger for living your truth overshadows all other desires, including the desire to be free of pain. It is seen that this hunger for truth is trustworthy and will lead you to what you need in each moment. And sometimes what you need is to embrace is yet another level of inner pain. The moments of relief and bliss that open up through having embraced your pain makes it all worth it. Over and over we learn that the act of embracing and being present with our pain is what connects us with the largest, tr larger truth of who we are. I think that one of the reasons why the crucifixion, obviously from the Bible, is such a powerful pervasive symbol in the world because it symbolizes one of the biggest challenges as human, the willingness to accept and be present with painful feelings. A new inner space is created where you have permission to live from the real. As we do the inner work, eventually a conviction arises, a quickening, a hunger, and a fierce commitment to living one's truth. A desire develops to live within each moment from within the fire of your original self. Each moment begins to represent a new, fresh opportunity to live from simple, open awareness of what is. When we start on the painful periphery and as we become increasingly skilled in enduring discomfort and the uncertainty of the unknown, there lies the potential to merge with the holy presence that lives at the center of our pain and realize that it is the truth of who we are. We start on the pain um, 
Many of us have had a feeling of hopeness, hope's homesickness deep within, a namelessness, a longing and aching grief, a nameless longing and aching grief. Many of us experience this as children in relation to our mothers, a feeling of being groundless and adrift. Embracing the homesick feeling within the mother wound leads, leads us to eventually come to a place where we realize that we can never truly be abandoned. This becomes possible by becoming a lover, loving inner mother to our inner child as we embrace her deepest despair. In that despair is a door, a door to our source, the unified consciousness in which we are one with all. In this way, our pain is a messenger, a messenger, uh, um, sorry guys here, where is it? A messenger telling us it's time to come home to the primordial home within, which is the realization of our true identity as consciousness, the knowing that we are spirit and can never truly be harmed or abandoned because we are one with all. I recall moments in my own healing process when I would process layers of grief within the mother wound, the sense of worthlessness and wanting to die, and in that willingness to simply feel the full scope of that incredible despair and grief, I knew that this was the bottom. There was no pain deeper than that. That pain was the ground, and by standing on that ground and being present with my deepest pain, I was free. Feeling our pain frees us from it. By sitting with our pain, we begin to recognize that the pain we have felt is not the truth of who we really are. We begin to see that the open, loving presence that we embody as we embrace our own pain is who we are, our true identity underneath all our other are all of our other identities. The culmination of living as a self is to live as the no self. The vast, loving space that witnesses our pain and embraces it completely. This is what a healthy mother does for her child. Author Rupert Spiros has said that the awareness is like the space in a room. It un unconditionally accepts what happens in it. Likewise, in order to develop optimally, a child needs a mother who is unconditionally present and accepting of her. However, Mothers are human beings with flaws who make mistakes. All of us receive some degree of wounding from our mothers. Through that primary, primary holy wound, we, become, we are called to become that loving mother to ourselves and to all life. As we embody the unconditional love of the inner mother, we become reconnected to life itself. We become reconnected to the birthless and the deathless center that is constantly born and dies in countless forms. This is the evolutionary step that lies within the pain of our mother wound. As women, we grow up believing that a holy power lies outside of ourselves. And in the healing process, we start to realize that most of what we desire, that which is most holy, eternal, and pure is inside of us and has always been there. In fact, it, it, it is us. Not just in one or some of us, but it lives equally in all of us, in all of life, because we are connected. Each time you lovingly embrace your own pain, you activate the power of oneness in all. <sighs> So this is written in, written by Bethany Webster, and uh, she has. It looks like she's written a ebook called Re uh, "Receive a Free Copy of My Ebook: What Is the Mother Wound." So yeah, so I think I'm going to take a look at that. Anyways, it's um, yeah, Bethany Webster, and this is on her website it must be in a blog on her I, I found it like I said on Facebook so yeah wow that was something I needed to read today I hope it contributed to you guys and uh, I'm gonna sign off and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day I'm just gonna pull one card here hmm. it's funny I got this card the other day energy flows where my attention goes 
So yeah, so watch where your energy flows today or where your energy is going, where your attention is flowing and allow yourself to, you know, shift it so that you have a little bit more relief and ease with it all. So anyways, I'm sending you guys really big hugs. Hope you have a wonderful, amazing rest of your day. Thanks so much for listening and big hugs to all of you.